just want to say that today is um, a very sad day for us. My um, my grandmother was fighting a lot for a long time, yeah. and now she's um, she can rest easy because yes. yes. I know she's in heaven. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wrote this poem this week, and um, it's called "A Soldier's Dream." I have watched fallen angels burn and demons reclaim their innocence. I have heard of mothers who have torn themselves apart to birth purity, fathers who give their souls to a future they will never see. And within every one of these moments, God is apparent, God is here, God is close. My shoulders lay heavy with tragedy. Consumed by fallacies, often overcome by family, is it strange that death upon mankind wakes our souls up to the reality that time is nothing but an illusion. I've come to the conclusion that these memories have made me a vanguard to those demons that once masqueraded themselves as monsters under my bed. I realize now that you were the angel that helped guide me towards stability. I miss the idea of you watching my future children gain in prosperity. Death's imperative purpose is to remind us that we often are so bewildered in our own individuality and life turns elusive once we materialize that true love never dwindles. It just constitutes framework for future movements you pervaded through my life like music. Evolve sonnets into my dialogue, sheltered haikus for my hellos, compositions for my blemishes, and love for my depiction of you. My shoulders lay heavy with tragedy, but my mind, my mind is stuck on the truth, the truth that this world can never be painful with you by my side. Humble tones, I breathe in less pride and exhale more hell so I may feel feelings in a fickle time with low fortitude. You are the castle that would never fall, stand tall. You often would absolve my anxiety, a woman of class and personality. You couldn't name one person who built more loyalty. Death will make you interrogate your own humanity. You often were so selfish for me. So as my pen collides into this history of my diary, I drown my thoughts in a river of ink to devise a fairy that my concept of you is perpetual. Let this poem be my ritual to announce that angelic habits are habitual and honesty the projection of your life is shown by the attendance of your service. A God's servant that has finally found refuge in a home we all call heaven. Her smile, a blessing from holy gates placed right at the footnote of her Bible. Life has this cycle, just how Mufasa's death made Simba a leader of his jungle. No Timon and Puma, but Akuna Matata. There are no worries where my grandmother is. I remember watching Lilo and Stitch as a child and here in the Hawaiian word ohana, I often would ask God, where is my ohana? I found it in her grandma. Your heart was a home that never left me in abandonment. No dog conversation, so your every word became illustrations in my mind. Just how you brought dawn and during long nights and even taught this blind boy how to paint stars in a blind sky. Conjure planets out of memories, ambitions into solar systems. You gave me the wisdom of house and love and a sacrifice. So while tragedy lays heavy, I must congratulate you for your ascension and admission into God's sanctified life. I paved concrete dreams into my life. They would call what you did for me spoiling. But you spoiled me with freedom, so I never faced enslavement in a world where a lack of commitment could be fostered from limitation. You taught me that even the unknown soldier's dream could rival the king's. Gave purpose to hollow halls that laid in my heart. Saved my soul from soul searching without guidance. Provided sustenance for my father who loves his family with all his heart. I know he had to learn that from you. Because raising an amazing son that became an amazing father as a single mother deserves more nobility than a Nobel Peace Prize. You know, it's true. I would not hesitate to give my life just to have one more second with you. I asked for diamonds, you gave me the mind, and every dream I ever had, you gave me your mind. Not to mind the fact that you supported every grind, and even when I was being difficult, you still gave me the room to shine. You are the happiness that I sculpted into my soul. Because I knew if I ever lost myself in the caverns of my thoughts, that any darkness I battle would be conquered by your light. You had so much affection for me in your eyes. Real eyes, real eyes, real lies, real recognizes real. Every poet has a pen that never breaks its word. Behind every poem, there's inspiration, and behind every poet, there's those who inspired him. Your reverence was gracious. 
You controlled my tides with the love of your moon, gave me a world in your ocean and a home on your shoreline. Death doesn't rationalize for when it's your time to go, you lose your life as if you're blind grandma. Look what time is confiscated. My memory seizes a moment when I was 17 years old reciting a poem at my grandfather's funeral. Tears in an old woman's eyes, my words are disguised, a mask, a facade to convince myself that everything would be all right. You must understand that when grandpa died, knowing you were still here gave me hope. So as a 23-year-old young man now, I can see those tears in that old woman's eyes have finally stopped. She can finally rest and be with her rolling. My grandfather used to have me rolling, taught me wisdom through laughter, while my grandmother gave me love through provision. The world said, pick your poison. My grandmother said, here's the antidote. She taught me that the cure to a dying heart is persistence and dedication. They say, it will be all right. You know, all boys cry, but men, you see men often die when they lose the women that help raise them. I only have one left and her name is Caroline. So of course, tragedy is on my shoulders. Behold a love that translates to sorrow after death, but death translates to better tomorrows. Once I realized the gift of you giving me your time allowed me to build my own mandate of heaven because even the unknown soldier's dream can rival the king. Chess matches with we once played with the devil became the reason why I valued the pawn more than the rook, the bishop far more than the knight, the queen far more than the king. Even the tiny ant still stands at the end of elephant. The heart is still more than just an organ. The smile is more charity than currency, and your presence was a present from God to me for 23 years. So when I shed these tears, each one personifies a revelation where you customize my smile. How precious is a woman who lives in a garden but still values every single petal. This lesson that you did not belong in man's world because Selvine was born an angel. A queen that never needed a throne, a heart as her crown, a smile as her kingdom, and always home for me when I felt alone, Grandma. One day I'll tell my children about the woman who made flowers grow out of concrete, made clouds out of rainstorms, and futures out of sacrifice. Your actions always screamed, I love you, and maybe that's why my soul finds it difficult to be silent. And as I write this poem in silence, I am reminded once again that love is timeless. I set my sun across your horizon for one final dance before your stars become permanent. Your moon becomes full. We held two different religions, but you still inspired my love for God. No wonder you love me so much. Any woman who loves God the way you did, her love is always a blessing. But look at her name, Sylvine. As for strong for a mind that was always at work, why for youthful? For not even time could age her so ill for luxurious, for a heart worth more than a mountain of gold. V for valiant, for Phil was intimidated by her glow. E for earth shaking, for the family she has helped pave will shake the globe. N for numberless, for time never seemed to change who she was. E for exhilarating for all the happiness that I was bestowed by her, Selene. Tragedy is on my shoulders, but your legacy has become my wings. And your final gift to me is allowing me to use, my, use your love as a means to dream and be who you always saw me to be. And maybe this isn't tragedy at all. Remember what I said about the soldier and the king. Maybe this is just a soldier dream rivaling the king. Sylvine this entire time was a soldier who was destined to be the queen. Her dreams turned into a kingdom of belief. Her love turned into a system of my dreams. Her life was the reason why the angels sang. Actually, I was wrong. Actually, the truth is my grandmother didn't leave tragedy on my shoulders because I read the well that she wrote in her soul and she left me no sorrow. She only left me hope. See, now the soldier's dream has removed the king. You see, there's no tragedy on my shoulders. Instead, she left me her beautiful legacy. Thank you.